So here we are on the electronic side of the HMV 2400. Now I mentioned in the previous video that what we really need to do is get rid of the black electrolytic capacitors which I know it's 35, uh, 40 years old, more than that isn't it, it's 1969, oh dear, it is getting on isn't it, it's, uh, it's 45 years old. These black electrolytic capacitors were notoriously unreliable at the time, those orange ones are tied with the same brush, we may as well change those at the same time. And then we've got that one on the power regulator, and there's one below, which all need to go. Quite easy access on this. It doesn't have to come off the chassis. And the regulator subboard, again, we can get access to that. What we've started to do, because we've got quite a few of these have come in one way or another, of the various stereo masters, is each of the ten models, we've bought a hobby box like this, I think our local Lidl was doing them, and we've simply filled the compartments with the components we need for this overhaul. So when I've picked out of stores, it's been just a matter of pulling two two microfarads, well of course it's 2.2 these days uh, four microfarads, so it's 4.7 these days I've got eight in stock because we bought some from China I think they're made for the photo flash market 100 microfarad of course 300 microfarad uh, are not easy, we'll put 330 in 400 we'll be doing 470 450 we'll be doing 470 and 750 we can get, otherwise it would be a thousand um, these are a special order item from RS Components and they come with a Japanese product they ain't cheap at £2.70 plus VAT each and uh, they come individually direct from the supplier so they're quite a hefty item, probably about the same size as what's come out but uh, they're 100 volt rated at 125 degrees so I don't think we'll be seeing that back in a hurry with a couple of those in. So we've got the ERT service sheet. Oh, it's got a bit dog-eared at the corner, which is the service chart 1707 for the HMV Stereo Master gramophone, as it says. And of course, on the layout, we can see there which capacitors which we're changing. For example, we've got capacitor 22 there, and we know the capacitor 22 is that one. 450 microfarads. So I've done that homework. It should be a doddle. And there's a circuit diagram as well for those of you who uh, think you need to get a copy of this. I think I uploaded this as a free download on Scribed, Scribed.com, um, for people who want to to do that. So what I'm going to do is desolder. We haven't got Mr. Chippy to do this uh, today, so I, I'm going to have to do it myself and uh, we'll desolder the components and we'll go back to record and we'll see what it looks like with some considerably smaller components that were in before right well you can see it's all now um, done this is uh, 20 minutes has elapsed by the way we're testing a camcorder here which I bought on eBay for £4.99 and um, as a, as a non-worker and uh, I'll just press this reset button and it seems to be working. So that was a good £4.99 plus postage, wasn't it? It's one of these which does it to a DVD. In this audio, in the audio workshop here, we haven't got a kind of permanent um, camera setup like we have in the RF workshop where we've got overhead cameras and mixer and digital video recorder and all that kind of malarkey. Right, so what? as I say, we've changed all these capacitors. Hopefully you can see some nice shiny new capacitors in and um, there's a bundle there and the one which came out of the power regulator there which is 100 microfarads you will see is leaking now I'm not going to test any of these 
I can't be bothered. They're going in the vertical filing cabinet. Front panel, we've taken the knobs off. We'll be taking this um, purse pex off and that'll be going running through the company dishwasher. So what we're now going to do, and I'll just prop this up so we can see, there just has to be a handy transformer to prop things up on. We've got this connected to the bench speakers. Under this bench are a pair of 400 watt disco speakers. This is about 7 watts per channel, so we shouldn't have a problem there. Mr Chippy, who does guitar amplifiers, that needs higher power um, test speakers than we do for doing the audio things like this. So, when I remove these, we just chop the leads to the speakers, put connector blocks in. There aren't any connectors on the product. And we just chop the wire to the pickup and solder it back on when we put it back in the cabinet. Some of the other models, they're plugs and sockets, but not on, on this one. Right, we'll switch it on. Good. Might hear a bit of a hum and a hiss. Sounds about as it should do. First thing I'm going to check is that we've got 24 volts off the stabilise power supply board here. If I put my little meter there in the units so we can see it, I don't know where we picked the earth up from. We'll try chassis. So that should be the, it's the emitter of transistor 1, which is the output transistor. We've got 24.5. We don't want to overrun it. So I'll just see if we can drop that a fraction. Of course, I didn't say I could find any uh, trimming tools. Good, did I uh, on here? So having found an insulated screwdriver, and all the capacitors we've changed for 35 volts plus. So the lowest voltage one was 9 volts the highest voltage capacitor was 30 volts which is that one I've just um, done the 24 volt regulator on that's been replaced with 50 volts and some of these others are 100 volt rated so we're well on top of the job and the temperature has been upped as well uh, some of these are 105 degrees some of those big ones are 125 degrees the chassis runs cool anyway so there we are that's set up now on this bench there should be a handheld oscillator. So if I just move the circuit diagram, we have a handheld oscillator. So we'll just turn the volume down on that and we'll put it in at the tape socket. So I'll change the mode with the thing as the knobs are off. So the first one is gram, tape, and the mono three and a half. So I've hopefully switched it to the auxiliary input, which is labeled as tape. I've switched this to mono, so it should come through both channels. I'll tell you what, we'll switch it to stereo. left hand channel right hand channel very quiet where's the balance control ah dirty volume control now I've overlooked that using the uh, service old product we'll just turn the amplifier off these are full size controls so there's no problem in getting the cleaner product inside. The volume controls have a centre tapping and that 
is because on this type of product the center tapping goes to a circuit so it's, it changes the, uh, the the tone setup so if you've got it uh, let's supposing you've got um, t treble and bass at zero as you're probably aware when it's quieter the, the tonal balance changes so some amplifiers have a loudness control but it's automatic on these and it's done from the center tapping of the volume control so the center tapped volume controls which is quite unusual well I think it's quite unusual So we'll just get that uh, in there, and we'll try again. Now I should have done that when I did the capacitors. I was uh, so bothered in uh, in talking into the camera. Left hand channel, right hand channel. Good. So we'll just check we've got an input on the gram. We better turn the volume down. Right hand channel, left hand channel. Finger, right, finger, left. So that's working fine. Turn that off. The lamp, there's a pilot lamp as it's called on these type of products and it's working on this one. 24 volts and it's MES so it's the screw, small um, screw type MES is miniature Edison screw 24 volts and it says in the manual what uh, what the wattage is. Um, Two point eight watts. So when we've cleaned the front panel, we, the next thing we've got to do is to strip down the cabinet. That'll be going through our church pipe organ restoration workshop, and it will be refrenched, polished uh, with shellac uh, clear polish. So that's on order, and that will be our next uh, thing. So you saw in the previous video what a state it had been in, some fool had varnished it. That's reacted with the uh, French polish underneath. So we'll, we'll get that all sanded down, but of course very carefully because it's only veneered. So there we are, fully overhauled, ready to do another 40 year service. And um, jobs are good, and as they say in Yorkshire where I'm from. So thanks for watching, and the next video on this will be regarding the cabinet. Thanks for watching.